welcome, I'm Wolfgang Reber and these are my quick tips. Hello 2016. So how was your New Year celebrations? Did you stay at home and sleep from one year into the next or did you party? We went to a party and what a party it was. The New Year came in and I went out. <laughs> well, well at least it was better than last year because last year I toasted the New Year at home my wife had dry and I had white. <laughs> I know, I know. Seriously though, I don't understand why people celebrate the end of a year. It only means that the car has depreciated again. And speaking of cars, guess what? One should never drink and drive on the freeways on New Year's Eve. You know those rest stops are pretty far apart. <laughs> Enough said. Most people make New Year's resolutions, go in one year and out of the other. Not me. This year, humour is going to play a big part in my life. Seriously, have you not found that the last few years have become tougher and more serious and it has become difficult to stick to those New Year's resolutions? So this year, my approach has changed. I spent the first week of 2016 thinking of what I wanted to do this year and basically came up with five changes I would make in my life. And these I would like to share with you as I believe they are realistic and most of all very pertinent to the world that we live in today. Number one, laugh more. I am going to laugh more this year. Having said that, my year started on a sad note, as my friend Gav died on New Year's Eve from taking too many heartburn tablets. I can't believe Gav is gone. <laughs> that was my best joke so far of 2016. In fact, a friend sent it to me yesterday and I've been laughing ever since. Now, it may not be politically correct as a joke, but then again, where has political correctness brought the world we live in today? If anything, it has messed it up more. So down with the socially acceptable, if something is funny, I am going to laugh at it. After all, I'm still entitled to my own thoughts and opinions. Hmm? Makes you think, huh? Number two, screw political correctness. Seriously, look at the world today. What the hell is going on? Have people completely lost it? Just look at how our politicians and it doesn't matter which country you live in, have completely messed up the world that we live in today. It is these same idiots that are now also wanting to tell us what we can say and what we can't, and how we should react. Huh? Here's a fact. We are all different, and we all have our own unique quirks. If you can't laugh at yourself or take a joke around your, the unique side of your culture, maybe... It's you who should grow up. Hello. Discrimination and personal attacks are completely out. Use common sense. But this oversensitivity has gone way beyond an idiotic level. Think about it. Number three. Call a spade a spade and for Pete's sake don't call it a shovel. I find it interesting that everyone else can have their say except you or me. This resolution goes pretty much hand in hand with my second one. Yet it is different. I am making a point this year to counteract all defamatory and unfair comments that the minorities make against the majority. Now let me explain this to you. There could be a thousand people at an event and one lone insecure schmuck has an issue with something. Guess what? The powers that be will listen to this one person and change everything to suit him and her, even if it is to the detriment of the other 999 people. Huh? Insanity. You know what? That stops today. I will no longer sit by quietly and accept such behavior. It has reached a point that anyone and everyone can dictate how we must react. Just because they feel emotionally offended by something. Hey. In my day, you got a smack as a child when you were naughty. If you didn't study and you failed a year, guess what? You had to do it over again. 
You were not pushed through. You were taught to take responsibility. Today, it's a generalization, the youth get a trophy for attending school. Huh? Talk about entitlement. Don't you think that just maybe this is where the problem lies? A lack of responsibility for your own actions. I ain't putting up with it anymore. Now let's move on to my fourth resolution. I will not be a religious bigot. Have you noticed how the world has gone religious crazy and the amount of hatred and wars that have started over religion? I saw a great cartoon the other day of aliens looking down onto the earth and all they saw was explosions and fighting. And the one alien said to the other, they're fighting over who has the most peaceful religion. Huh, funny but very sad. Enough said. Research on the internet, and look, this could be incorrect by a few numbers, for me has indicated that there are just under a hundred mainstream religions with over a million followers each, and just under about 200 minor religions with less believers. This is interesting, as we have just under 300 religions in the world that claim that they are the way. Hello, think about this. They all claim that they are the route to salvation. Maybe I don't understand logic, but surely all of them cannot be the way. Only one can. And that too is an arguable point. How do you know it is yours? So in 2016, I will keep my religious views to myself. As I believe spirituality is something personal, and instead of preaching, I will actually walk my talk, including not judging others for their beliefs either. If we simply learn to respect and not judge others, maybe we can eventually live together peacefully. And my final resolution, number five, is avoid mass marketing and manipulation. In my personal opinion, I have never encountered as much materialism and greed as I did in the last few months. I believe it is due to an increased presence of aggressive marketing and control by the powers that be to turn the masses into exploited sheeples. Here's a fact. I can only live in one room at a time. I can only watch one television at a time. And I can only drive one car at a time. Is it really necessary to own five of everything? Having the latest mobile phone, does it make me greater than someone else? Wake up. If you haven't woken up yet, you can start opening your eyes by giving away or selling off everything you don't need or haven't used in the last six months. My wife and I just spent the last few weeks renovating our home. And as I moved my study from downstairs to upstairs, I literally gave away a thousand books that I haven't opened in the last 10 years. I found four modems in a cupboard and so much stuff I was hoarding for absolutely no reason or purpose. Let me tell you something, what an incredible feeling to give away to others in need or simply just to declutter and realize that the most important things in life are your health and your family. So my goal this year is to scale down completely as I've realized I don't need all this materialism to be happy. Just think about it. You spend a fortune on insurance to insure all the crap in your home. Now, if you were to cut down on all the crap and only had one TV, one microwave and one computer, you wouldn't need to spend a copious amount of money on insurance every month because in six months, those policy fees you save would cover the items anyway if you lost them or had them stolen. But no, we need 10 of everything. Guess what? We cause our own stress. Wake up and smell the roses. That's my message for you for 2016. I wish you a blessed, healthy and peaceful year. And believe that with the right mindset, you can make it the most memorable year ever. From me Wolfgang, thanks for listening to my rantings. I'll chat with you again next time. Bye.